The Mortal Kombat film is generally regarded as one of the better video game film adaptations, and this is a position that I agree on. Sure, it's got a few minor missteps, but it's a pretty enjoyable film, so let's go over the good and the bad of Mortal Kombat. <laughs> The Mortal Kombat film had a lot of good things going for it, like its director, Paul W.S. Anderson. Okay, he did a good job on this film anyway. Probably because this was before he met his wife, so he wasn't able to make it. Liu Kang, we must find the real chosen one, Alice! Now, in all seriousness, one of the reasons I think this film really worked in the end was the casting, which I think was absolutely great. Where do you get these guys? Now, Liu Kang has never really been one of my favorite characters, partially because the game storylines had him being the canonical winner of the first three games, making him kind of a Gary Stu, and Liu Kang never seemed all that interesting. Also, he's one of the cheapest characters and kind of a wiener, and also, how the hell is this a fatality? Fatality. How is that fatality, you stupid little twerp? <laughs> but Robin Show really did a great job in the role of Liu Kang and actually made you care about him as a character. Though they did give him a couple plot threads that didn't end up doing all that much. First off, making him a non-believer and protecting the Earth by fighting in the Mortal Kombat tournament. It wasn't enough you filled my head with that nonsense. To save the world is not nonsense. This isn't your god of thunder and lightning. He's just a beggar. Something that wasn't part of his backstory in the game and doesn't really lead to anything in this. He just ends up seeing a few supernatural things and then suddenly he's Mr. Know-it-all about everything. Who is this guy? He's Raiden, god of lightning and protector of the realm of Earth. What if all the legends were true? What legends? What the movie gave Liu Kang as his initial motivation to fight in the tournament was to avenge the death of his brother. Your brother's soul is mine. And also, your father's brother's nephew's cousin's former roommate's soul is mine. I want to represent the Order of Light at the tournament. The man who killed my brother will be there. That cannot be your only reason why you will fail. Oh yes, I forgot. We're fighting for the fate of the world! Oh, well I for one am totally convinced that's his reason for going now! The Dead Brother plot does at least make it more personal between Shang Tsung and Liu Kang, but it's never really given all that much weight and mostly seems like a way to get Liu Kang to want to fight in Mortal Kombat, which is a situation they create themselves by making him a non-believer. Now, I don't think the Dead Brother thing ruined anything. In fact, I think it was actually a good idea. I just feel like it could have been incorporated a bit better. Now, as for Lyndon Ashby as Johnny Cage... This is where you fall down. <laughs> I really think Lyndon Ashby was the perfect Johnny Cage. In fact, he adds a lot to this film. If they had kept him around and not killed off the character, it would have made Dumbass Annihilation a lot more enjoyable. I mean, besides it being enjoyably bad. But yes, Ashby really nailed it with this performance. It was kind of the perfect balance of being a bit cocky, yet still a likable character. He never went too far with it and even fights Goro just to protect everyone else. Goro's never been beaten. You go up against him, he'll kill you. I can't let what happened to Art happen to you, not to you. Oh, okay. Apparently it's just to protect Sonya. Freaking ass. Oh, don't you dare do this to protect me, Johnny Cage. I have to. I've known you for like a day, so I'd do anything for you. Besides, the only other chick in this film is apparently over 1,000. No thank you. Cage was also the comic relief for the most part in the film, but I never felt it got annoying because he kept it serious when the situation called for it, was a competent fighter, and I found most of the lines that were supposed to be comical actually funny. Mm, thank God I didn't ask him to park the car. I'm in a hostile environment, I am completely unprepared. I'm surrounded by people who probably want to kick my ass. It's like being back in high school. <laughs> Those were $500 sunglasses, asshole. <gasps> and they even had Cage be the one that killed off Goro. This is where you fall down. <laughs> Complete with him low blowing Goro. All right, let's dance. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yes, that's a beautiful thing right there. Even if you couldn't actually low blow Goro in the game. Oh, shut up. Me. Christopher Lambert as Raiden is another casting choice I think was great, because we not only got a Raiden with a strong presence, but we got a silly guy delivering the best lines ever. I've been waiting for you. What took you so long? I guess you knew it would end this way. Didn't have a clue. And without a doubt, one of the greatest lines ever. The fate of billions will depend upon you. <laughs> I love it! <laughs> Sorry. Kerry Hiragiri Tagawa as Shang Tsung. Sure, yeah, he hammed it up quite a bit, but I think that really fit for the character and the film, and I mean, he gave us the Your Soul is Mine face. Your soul is mine. Your face is mine. No! The only thing I find really off with Shang Tsung in this film is his infatuation with Sonya. It just feels out of place and it really has this creepy old man vibe to it. <laughs> yes. Then again, I guess Shang Tsung is a creepy old man, so... She's not to be harmed, only humiliated. Her plans for my... Beautiful Sonya. Other than that, though, Shang Tsung in this film was a really memorable and good villain. And now for a taste of things to come. He seems like a kind of crappy boss, though. Trevor Goddard's Kano, well, this is kind of interesting because before this film, Kano looked like this and was supposedly Chinese slash American. And here's how Goddard played him. Hello, baby. Did you miss me? This little baby brings back memories now, doesn't it? It put a big smile on your partner, though. Ear. Shh. To ear. And here's how Kano looks and sounds as of Mortal Kombat 9. Now that he softened you up, it's my turn. Oh, I got a knack for survival. <laughs> It's kind of funny when an adaptation influences and ends up retconning something like this, and the movie got the Kano storyline pretty much straight on, with him having killed Sonya's partner and her joining the tournament to get revenge on him. And apparently her revenge against Kano leads her to club, we don't care if we get shot, we've gotta keep dancing. <laughs> Sonya is... um... well... She's alright. She's kind of pissed off a lot. Then she gets kidnapped and forced to wear a dress, and she seems a little less pissed off. Guess forced dressings just kind of make her happy. Sonya! Don't get on that thing! Hey, Sonya! Oh well, I'm not actually gonna stop you, Sonya. No, I got more important things to do, like, uh, making metal arms. She gets her revenge on Kano and then gets kidnapped by Shang Tsung, who challenges her, which she doesn't accept, which apparently means he has the right to dress her up any way he feels, so he, uh, chooses that. Then again, the way Shang Tsung is in this film, he is probably hoping she'd fight him in that. So, if he could choose her fighting outfit, could she choose his? How dare you! Your dignity is mine! Katana as well in this film, I don't have any real faults on how the character acts, but she's not particularly all that interesting either. She kind of plays the second mentor role along with Raiden. In our world, if you look hard enough, you will find another guy. What, Katana? Why didn't she just come to Outworld with us? Why'd we have to find her? I have nothing further to teach you, Liu Kang. You never taught me anything! Katana seems to take some pretty big leaps of faith in her deductive reasoning as she fights in the tournament, and because she's technically from Outworld, it means she's fighting for a side she doesn't want to win. However, she is apparently just fighting to give advice to Liu Kang, meaning had she not not gotten paired up with Liu Kang, her whole plan would have been for nothing. And was this her first fight in the tournament? Did she beat some other Earthrealm warriors first, essentially handing their souls to Shang Tsung just to give Liu Kang a couple basic tips? There are easier ways to do that, Katana. Hmm. Throw water at Sub-Zero. 
Huh? Yeah! Speaking of which, why is it that when someone, even from Earthrealm like Liu Kang wins, old Shangster gets to steal their soul? Well, that doesn't seem fair at all. You'd think Raiden would be on top of that one. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, Raiden, I can't stay mad at you. Remember my words. Kitana! That's enough! You disappoint me. Not very wise. Why? What are you gonna do? End this fight and let you both go without consequence. Shang Tsung, you monster! Also, Shang Tsung can just end a fight if he doesn't like the way it's going. I mean, I guess that means his side lost, but that seems kinda cheap there, too. This is where you fall down. Wait, 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 fight over. Goro, you disappoint me. Not wise. But, but, but I was about to kill him! Yes, but I've a fate far worse for him. Mortal dismissal. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. I thought people died in this tournament. Mortal combat doesn't mean death, but life. <laughs> well, I can stay mad at that, Raiden. Oh yeah, okay. Wait a second, no. Be good of useless. To win your next match, use the element which brings life. Katana, really? I mean, not only do you find the most dumbass way possible to get close to someone to give them a message, but then you can't be very clear about it either? I mean, maybe there's some rule that says she can give advice, it's just she has to be really cryptic about it. She is also really banking on the fact that water would be at the spot they were fighting, huh? And speaking of Sub-Zero and Scorpion... These two are the biggest misstep of the film, in my opinion. I wanted to see them as actual characters, and instead we got... Scorpion and Sub-Zero, deadliest of enemies, but slaves under my power. The first Sub-Zero here was involved with the death of Scorpion's clan and Scorpion himself when he was alive. Scorpion took a deal in the afterlife to return in his form as Scorpion and entered the tournament just to get revenge on Sub-Zero. And yeah, in the game's storyline, it's Scorpion, not Liu Kang, who ends up killing Sub-Zero. I get in an adaptation, you gotta cut out certain parts to keep the film's flow going, but completely dropping these two as actual characters and making them just silent, mindless goons for Shang Tsung was kind of a big disappointment. And now I'd like to welcome you to Sub-Zero! And Scorpion! Deadliest of enemies, but predictable jokes under my power! Got anything to say, you two? Nope, of course you don't, cause you two aren't real characters, ha <laughs> Yeah, well I'd rather be silent than just scream stock phrases from the game. Hey, I said a couple new things! Oh yeah, welcome and get down here. Those were classic lines for sure. Oh, that is it! Get out of here! <laughs> You two weren't supposed to talk. Also, did Scorpion's harpoon, spear, whatever really need to be a CGI serpent thingy? Well, at least it wasn't chains. Get over here! I do rather like Scorpion's not impressed reaction when it gets stuck in the tree, though. Then we have Goro, who I still think looks great, and this was really an awesome job on the animatronics, but his big introduction to the tournament is this. Is it time? Yes. <laughs> So really, the ultimate powerhouse that is Goro just kind of tosses people onto gravel. That's how brutal he is. This really is kind of a thing with all Mortal Kombat adaptations, which is kind of funny. The game that built its reputation on being so gory rarely has 
any gore when it's put into another medium. And yeah, I know they didn't want the rating bumped too high so it could still get targeted towards a bit of a younger audience so it wouldn't be like torn apart body pieces that Gora would be tossing here, but they could have at least looked bruised and bloodied up a bit. I mean, take a look at this guy he finishes on screen. It's like he dies just from getting one more punch because his life bar was all the way down. Finish him! <laughs> Did you even know that guy, Sonya? Really, this is someone we've seen Johnny Cage have a conversation with once. It'd make about as much sense if she was this upset over that weird tiger guy dying. Your soul is mine. So while Goro still looks very impressive, within the same movie, we have Reptile. <laughs> Really seems to be the ninjas I had the biggest issues with, huh? I know this was earlier CGI and stuff, but I was one of those people that never thought this looked good, and it's kind of a perfect comparison of digital versus practical in the same film. And really, Reptile is just confusing. They do eventually have him in his humanoid form, but it's when he falls into a statue that grabs him with tentacles, so you kind of wonder if it's Reptile or the statue thing, though I guess that's why they just have the Shao Kahn voice clip pop up to make sure you know who it is. Just having Reptile in his humanoid form with like flashes of his reptilian nature showing up at times would have been a lot more menacing and looked a lot better. Instead we get a statue thing that captures a bad CGI in it then releases it when Liu Kang throws him because um and then there's bugs in it also just because. I don't know. These just seem like the ramblings of someone high as fuck. A reptile! Reptile's like the CGI thing. And it just like gangles around. But then but then there's a statue on the ground, right? And and the CGI thing falls into the statue and, and tentacles come from it and they wrap up the CGI creature and together they become one. They become human. Human reptile. But but then when when that's defeated, it releases him, and there's bugs inside it. Yeah. Also, was that mouth on the mask really necessary? Nitpick! And another little nitpick I kind of wondered about was what determined where people fought. I mean, there were what seemed to be a couple official spots, but then it's like, Hey Cage, you're fighting Scorpion, but it, it's off in those woods somewhere, and no one's coming to watch that one, and you're just gonna have to keep going until he ambushes you. Have fun! Of course, yeah, it would be boring if they all just fought at the arena, and it is like the game's having them fight around at different locations. I just kind of wondered what determined it. Also, during this fight, Scorpion seemingly teleports them to the Nether Realm, Mortal Kombat's version of Hell, where Cage defeats him. So, uh, how does Cage get out of there? He just walks back out of Hell? I, I mean, I guess this could just be a weird part of the islands, so in that case, I guess Scorpion just decided he made a big mistake of fighting locations or just really wanted to burst out another line. Welcome! Oh yeah, forget what I said earlier about them not giving Scorpion a character. They made him courteous and someone who likes to get down. Get down here! Get down here! Get down! Everybody get down with Scorpion! No! No! I am so out of here! Oh, sorry, I thought you'd like that. Well, I certainly did not! Good day, sir! <laughs> But really, the overall plot of this movie is a good translation of the storyline from the first game. They made the change of Shang Tsung from being the old man, which honestly didn't affect anything, and put Raiden in more of his mentor role that they decide after the first game, rather than the bored lesser god who destroys the world upon winning. Yeah, so it's nice that Raiden got retconned into a lesser jerk as well. All the fights were cool for the most part, but I will complain a bit about the final one with Shang Tsung, where instead of having him morph into different people while fighting, they had him summon physical forms of some of the people he's killed. The source of all Shang Tsung's power 
The souls of a thousand dead warriors. So the souls of a thousand dead warriors equals seven random guys, huh? My main issue with this is that it doesn't really feel like Liu Kang fighting Shang Tsung so much as Shang Tsung finding a loophole in the rules to throw some lackeys at Liu Kang to fight for a little bit. I, I mean, they could have at least made one of them the original Kung Lao at least. I am Liu Kang, descendant of Kung Lao. So Liu Kang is Kung Lao's descendant, right Sub-Zero? <laughs> yup. Really, I think sticking more to the game's formula of having Shang Tsung morphing into the other characters would have been a much cooler bit than just somehow having him summon randoms to fight Liu Kang for a little bit. Like, if all of a sudden he had to fight Raiden or Johnny Cage, it would have thrown Liu Kang off. In fact, when Sung actually does use his morph to confuse Liu Kang, you wonder why it worked and why he doesn't even fight in that form. Liu. You're not really Chan. Remember when our parents died? Oh yeah, you're right. Our parents did die. You really are my brother, even though Shang Tsung was standing there a second ago. Oh my! Oh Shang Tsung, you are priceless. Also, stupid surprise, Liu Kang. Flawless victory. What? I so hit you during that fight! Uh, yeah, really, Lou. Uh, fatality would have made a lot more sense there. Oh, shut up! I'm the Mortal Kombat champion! Mm. So the film closes us out with the promise of a really imposing, powerful Shao Kahn. You weak, pathetic fools. I've come for your souls. I don't think so. And of course, instead, we got a bald Brian Thompson with daddy issues. Overall, like I said, though, I really liked this film. They stayed very close to the source material and its story. It had good fights and a great cast that brought it all together. These were just some of the things I liked, didn't, or random thoughts I had on the film. So I guess that closes out our look at more. Oh, oh no! I'm getting attacked by something invisible! Cause that's really easy for me to do! Ah. Reptile. I am Reptile. I will fight you, Phaerus. Um, for some reason. I don't know, I'm just like in the grudge of you or something. Oh yeah? I can do that too. Reptile. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, you have got to be kidding me, Tattles! Again? Freaking fanboy loser! This bit is over, Phyllis! Oh. I don't like this movie, doesn't look too friendly. This monster seems so fake, my nerves are gonna break. Fatalists don't let me down, you need to be around. Grab that running one up and blast that sink a new one. This movie looks shitty. Fail us, so fail us. Bring a multi comedy of fail us, so fail us. And some all movies of fail us, so fail us. I don't care about how you sound of fail us. What's your opinion of us? Have fun with Annihilation, sucker! Ah, uh, you came back! Really? Damn it.